Before I begin, I want to thank Father Ehring for inviting me here, uh, not only during the novena to St. Anne, but on this time of celebration of the 100th anniversary of the building of your church. In fact, the last time I was here, uh, there was no tabernacle. Good to see it's come back and well restored. In today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the disciples were hungry. Although it was the Sabbath, Jesus allowed them to pluck grain to eat. The Pharisees accused them of breaking the law which didn't permit working in the fields on the Sabbath. Jesus takes the opportunity to teach the Pharisees about his authority and about how they shouldn't let the technicalities of the law stand in the way of mercy. Now, I'm not suggesting that Jesus was teaching that mercy overturns the law in all cases. However, in this particular case, when people are hungry, perhaps starving, the law against working on the Sabbath shouldn't be used as an excuse to not allow what we would call one of the corporal works of mercy, namely, to feed the hungry. Now, I must admit that uh, when I'm on Barton Street and I think of feeding the hungry, I can't help but think of my grandmother who lived at the corner of Barton and Leinster where my mother grew up, who, by the way, attended St. Anne's School. When I visited my grandparents as a child, my grandmother ensured that I was always well fed. She knew my favorite foods, and of course, she knew my favorite junk foods as well. I suspect that many of you have had the same or similar experience. It's just not possible for children to visit a grandmother and leave her home hungry, is it? <laughs> it's not possible. And I'm sure the same was true when Jesus visited his grandmother, St. Anne. I'm sure that Jesus never left St. Anne's home hungry. My grandmother not only fed me food, she also made sure that I was spiritually fed she would take me to St. Anthony's Church, where she showed me how to light candles and taught me how to pray to the saints. As you know, most churches today don't have real candles, apart perhaps from the ones in the sanctuary. Whether or not we have candles in the church that we light for the saints, we must not lose our devotion to the saints. We must also hand our devotion to the saints on to the next generation. Thus, we must find ways to introduce children to the saints and to instill in them a love for the saints. Although the saints lived on earth in the past, they love us and pray for us in the present. The saints in heaven are our brothers and sisters in Christ, eager to hear our prayers and to help us. This novena in preparation for celebrating the Feast of Saints Anne in Jochum is a wonderful opportunity to ask her for her prayers and to hand on your devotion to Saint Anne to the next generation. It's good to see at least a couple of children here. I see a, a girl there, a boy over there. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad someone brought you here. Grandparents can play such an important role in the faith life of their grandchildren, especially these days when parents don't necessarily bring their children to Mass. If you are a grandparent, I invite you to consider bringing your grandchildren here next week for one of the Novena Masses. As vocations director for the diocese, I have learned that nothing is more fruitful for nurturing vocations than prayer. I ask all of you to pray for our young people, that the Holy Spirit may guide them in their vocational discernment. And if you are a young person, pray for your vocation and for the vocations of other young people. I ask all of you to encourage young people to consider the various vocations before them. 
In the past, vocation promotion focused primarily on the priesthood. Today, young couples need to be encouraged to consider the vocation of sacramental marriage. And many young women have never even heard of the vocation of consecrated virginity lived in the world. As for young men, recent studies indicate that a high percentage of newly ordained priests reported that they were invited to consider the priesthood by their pastor, parent, teacher, or friend. Surprisingly, these same studies also report that most Catholics say they have never suggested that a young person consider a particular vocation. If you are hesitating to encourage a young man or a young woman to consider a particular vocation, remember that we often see someone else's vocation before they see it themselves. And grandparents, if a child, if a grandchild comes to you to talk to you about his or her vocation, be sure to encourage them as you would if they wanted to talk about career aspirations. I myself talked to my grandfather when I first considered a vocation to the priesthood. He was very encouraging. He gave me books to read. The fact is that sometimes young men considering the priesthood are afraid to tell their parents. Grandparents, I encourage you to be kind of proactive about this. Tell your grandchildren that they should be thinking about their vocation and that you would welcome news from them, whatever vocation they may discern. Young people, I encourage you to pray to Saint Anne for help discerning your vocations and be sure to ask your grandparents to pray for your discernment. Now, as I said, my grandmother not only fed me food when I visited her home, she also made sure that I was spiritually fed. Likewise, I'm sure that Saint Anne not only fed Jesus food when he visited her, she also made sure that Jesus was spiritually fed. And for the past 100 years, Saint Anne has been ensuring that you are spiritually fed when you visit her here in her paternal home. You aren't only celebrating the anniversary of a building, you are celebrating the anniversary of opening your spiritual home where parishioners have been praying through the intercession of Saint Anne for over a hundred years. As you celebrate this milestone in the life of your parish, it is a time to thank God for the gift of your church building, as well as the gift of St. Anne's patronage and the gift of grandparents. St. Anne, pray for us.